mission of uh, a uh, uh, primitive Baptist church. Mount Lebanon Primitive Baptist Church where my grandmother was still holding court. And so uh, I, I get uh, the drive back to the church for this uh, three o'clock uh, anniversary service and you can't get in the church. It's not that large. It probably is uh, maybe about the half the size of this room. And so they had some little uh, stands along the windows where people could stand and the windows were up and they could kind of see it here. And so, as I said, I was pretty happy with, with myself. And so I just walked up to the uh, podium and with some degree of arrogance, I think, retrospectively, and I said, uh, all right, it's good to be uh, home. Uh, and I said, look, uh, what would you like me to preach about? You know, giving the impression I could you know, preach on, on anything. And so, and so I said, what would you like me to preach about? And my Sunday school teacher, when I was a little boy, stood up in the back and I thought, oh yeah. And she stood up and she said, Cleveland, I'd like you to preach about five minutes. <laughs> Down to the foyer, 
hey, she comes down the aisle with 27 bridesmaids <coughs> uh, and groomsmen uh, and 15 or 16 ring bearers and flower uh, girls and florists who follow the girls. And, and they spent tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and, and the bride is standing there and tears are streaming down her face in joy and the groom is Google-eyed looking at his wife-to-be and they leave the church and they're the throw of rice and beans and flowers and everything else they can get on them. And then, and then they go off and get married and a few years later uh, I come to the house and, 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 and uh, they have, uh, I go to the bathroom there, his and her towels, and his and her children, and his and her cars. And so, when you think about the wedding, and then think about what you see five years later, why? Well, the amount of enthusiasm at the beginning of a task is disproportionate to the amount of enthusiasm at the conclusion of a task is called Cleaver's Law. I've seen it played out. I've seen it played out uh, with, with, with children. The, the, the baby is born and, and the father is coming to the hospital looking in the maternity window with all the babies and he's giving out uh, cigars and Big Macs and uh, whatever else he can give out to people because of all of the joy he is feeling. And, 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 and then you visit the new baby in the home and they will not allow you to pick up the baby. You have to put on a mask uh, and rubber boots and gloves because they love this baby to death. They will not allow you to put germs on this baby. And then just a few years later, 12 years later, at midnight, they ask, you ask, where is your child? And you have absolutely no idea. 12 years old. Why? The amount of enthusiasm at the beginning of the task is disproportionate to the amount of enthusiasm made at the conclusion of the task. It's called Cleveland's Law. I have seen it played out. I have seen it played out with people when they buy cars. They go out and buy a $75,000 car, and they're washing the car every day, and even on Sundays when they should be other places. And they're washing the car, keeping flies uh, away from the, the, the car, because they love this car. And four years later, the little children in the neighborhood, right on the side of it, wash me, please. <laughs> The amount of enthusiasm at the beginning of a task is disproportionate to the amount of enthusiasm remaining at the conclusion of a task. It is called Cleveland's Law. It also happens with people who try to build a country and people who get to a point where they make a commitment to be a citizen. And then something happens. No longer are they trying to be edu uh, educated uh, on issues. The New York Times yesterday ran a story about the, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Newsweek, the ignorance of the American public. I think it was 57% who didn't, couldn't call the name of the Vice President of the United States. I'm not talking about some third world country in sub-Saharan Africa. I'm talking about the United States of America, the most powerful nation on the planet. And what happens is that we relax our commitment to justice and peace and, and taking care of all of the citizens of the republic. When I say we relax it, we relax it because we don't vote. We had, a, we had a mayoral election in Kansas City this past Tuesday. 22% of the people voted. 13% of the African American community voted. If that had happened when I, had, when I ran, I wouldn't have won. And so, I wonder why are people so relaxed? They must not know what's going on. Friends, there is a cold wind blowing across America. A cold wind is blowing across this nation. And it does not take a lot of time to see it and feel it. This is a tumultuous time and there is a requirement of each of us to change things. Let me just tell you, we are now serving in a Congress that is willing to cut life